Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. So today I want to talk to you about the paradox of the minimum greenhouse temperature. It's a fancy title, but basically what I'm talking about there is this idea of keeping one side or the whole greenhouse to a minimum temperature. It's not quite as simple as it first sounds. So I will explain to you all about that. But before I do, I just thought I'd show you this glorious Lelia Anseps that I've got going on here in what I now term Paradise Corner, because it seems to be where all the blooms are at the moment. And here it is up here. And I've waited a year for this now, and it's not disappointed. It looks absolutely wonderful, and it's just beginning to release some scent too. And it looks particularly nice with the Epicat layer there, the brassier down here, and of course, the wonderful Zygopedalum in the foreground. So, let's jump in. And we are in. So, just before we get into that, so the Lady Rancep starts down here, works its way up here, and we've got this great big long spike which is probably about two foot tall and then it finishes in these glorious blooms i'll just give you a close-up there absolutely beautiful it's looked very much like a lobster when it was all closed up but now it's all opened up in its full glory and it is a gorgeous bloom and i know many of you have this one and it's definitely well worth having it's not been any trouble for me and uh, I would make a video on it, except it's usually the ones that cause me trouble that I make videos on. <laughs> um, and just before we head over into the other side, because that's where we're going to talk about, just another little look at this Zygopetalum. It's almost fully open now, just that last little bud there that's opening. And this year, I, I'm glad to say, I haven't got any mutations on the blooms that I can spot anyway. It's all looking wonderful. So, yeah, the whole corner's looking really nice, as you can see here. Loads and loads of blooms. Um, this is obviously because I've got this over at 18 degrees Celsius now. So we're going to go through to the cooler side where, as you can imagine, there aren't anywhere near as many blooms. Still got lots of streptocarpus out at the moment, but there's not a lot going on. Um, cyclamens, well I suppose, now that I'm here, I can see that there are quite a few things going on. But uh, orchid-wise, not a great deal in orchid terms. The uh, twinkles are about to come out. That'll really boost things up a little bit. So what I want to talk about is the temperatures. So we have this goal, don't we? Or I have a goal anyway over in this side of the greenhouse that I want to try and keep it to a minimum of 12 degrees. And that sounds really straightforward. You know, you simply get yourself a controller, you attach it to a heater. The heater comes on when the temperature sensor indicates that the temperature here is below 12 degrees job done dead simple however it's nowhere near as simple as that in reality so let's explain why well over here you can just see past the cylogeny there two white gadgets can you see them there it's focusing okay so the one on the left the thermo pro one so that connects to uh, like a sister unit which is up in the bedroom and I can see what the temperature is in here. So it's just a straightforward, I think it's a Bluetooth uh, thing that's going on. The one on the right there is another sensor and that connects to my phone. And I'd show you that if I wasn't filming through it. But I have an app on the phone and basically what it does is it reports every, I think it's every 10 minutes to, through to my phone and it tells me what the temperature is in this side of the greenhouse. And on the same app, I have another one of those sensor units over in the warm side. So I can see all through every 24 hour period what the temperature is. And I can even set alerts. So I've got alerts set so that when it drops below 12 degrees in here, I get an alert to tell me that that's happened. Okay, so where's the issue? Well, the issue is that these thermometers or these temperature sensors up here are giving me different readings to what the sensor down here. If you can just see through the through all the things that's going on, there's a controller down there, just off to the right there. There's the sensor. So what that sensor is doing there is feeding back. We've got this feedback loop. We've got the heater down here. Heater heats it up. Sensor senses the temperature. There is my target temperature. There's the actual temperature. And when the actual temperature drops below the target temperature by 0.3 degrees, I think it's set to, then the heater will kick in. Now, the very observant amongst you might have noticed that I 
currently have the temperature set to 14.3 degrees Celsius. So how come? Well, this is where the paradox is, because the truth of the matter is that the temperatures are different throughout the greenhouse. And those of you who have greenhouses will know this. I don't have the same temperatures up above right near the roof as what I have down below in the kind of understory of the greenhouse. Now, I'm guessing that that is because you lose most of your heat through the roof. Even though I've got bubble wrap up there, obviously heat rises, hotter rises. So that's where most of the heat is going to be lost. So what is actually happening is the temperature sensors which are up here are reporting to me that usually it's about three four o'clock in the morning when it's at its coldest outside and last night we had a frost so it obviously went down to zero degrees or very close to it they are reporting to me that there is an alert and the temperature is dropping below 12 degrees celsius but down here it's telling me that it's a constant 14 degrees celsius so what i keep doing i keep coming in here and increasing the target target temperature. So that's I've just set that now to 14.3. I set it up by 0.1 of a degree because overnight up here it dropped below 12. It went to 11.9 degrees Celsius. And I know from my experiences in the past that although many orchids will go well below 12 degrees, there are lots and lots of plants in this side of the greenhouse that just don't like it. They'll survive but they don't like it. You can see from this bougainvillea here, it's lost most of its leaves. Still got some bracts on it, but it's lost most of its leaves. It did it last year. I was looking for all sorts of problems in the pot and in my care for it. And you know, I think it's just the temperature. It's not killed it, it doesn't damage it. It just loses its leaves once that temperature starts to drop. And the same goes for some of the begonias that I've got, like pretty much all the begonias, not all of them, but pretty much all of them, have begun, begun to show some stress once it started to get towards 12 degrees Celsius. Uh, the same happens with pelagoniums and one or two other things that I've got. So I am really keen to make sure it doesn't drop below 12 degrees anywhere in this side of the greenhouse. Hence, what I keep doing is increasing that target temperature down there. Now, obviously, the problem for that is that it then costs me money every time I increase it. So what we've got now is we've got a minimum temperature in the kind of upper story of the greenhouse of 12 degrees. But down below, the average temperature is about 14.3. Obviously, it's during the day now. The temperature is a little bit warmer. So what I think is happening is the heater is coming on. It's heating it down below to 14.3. That is then rising up as warmer air and the temperatures up here are then getting up to 12 degrees. But due to the rate of loss that's going through the roof pretty quickly, it's not able to catch up. So it's not really keeping the upper story to where I want it. I'm paying more for the understory because I've got it at a minimum of 14.3. I'm just about managing to keep the upper story at 12. Um, and the heat is going out the roof. And I'm having to raise the lower temperature more than I should just to keep up with the rate of loss of heat through the roof. So what's the solution to that? Well, as far as I can see, the only solution is to get more of the insulation. Now, I'm not really inclined to put more bubble wrap on the roof. It's such a faff. I was looking into polycarbonate, and I know I bang on about this quite a lot. I was looking at polycarbonate to go on the outside. Um, Mick did t talk about this from Mick's Master Valiers. Uh, he knew somebody, I know somebody, who has like magnetic strips on these sheets of polycarbonate and he simply pops them on the outside during the winter and removes them during the summer. Now my, my only problem with that is that unless it's the, the properly sealed then you're going to get that cold air down the fluting of the polycarbonate, the gaps in between. I really wonder if it makes any difference whatsoever. Um, 
I might be wrong. If somebody's done that and they can categorically say it makes a big difference, then please tell me. I, I'll be willing to listen to that. Uh, but my own feeling is that, that scientifically <laughs> it won't work. I can't really see how applying anything to the outside of a greenhouse, unless you've sealed it properly, will will help you know in the in the inside will help the uh, insulative properties of that greenhouse by any measurable factor i could do that on the inside that might help because i can always seal the gaps then between the framing and the polycarbonate with something with some kind of tape or bubble wrap or something uh, that's a that's a possibility but the upshot of all this is that I wonder if, because I, I have been looking into the cost, costings of all this and cost of the polycarbonate, I wonder whether the proposed solution is actually going to cost me more money than what it's costing me now to actually heat the greenhouse. So even though I'm heating it more than what I should be, I'm only trying to keep it to 12 but well, obviously as you can see from down the sensor there I'm heating this side now to 14.3 in order to make sure that every area of this cool side is a minimum of 12 and um, I just wonder whether it would be too expensive I'm still looking into it I'm still trying to uh, figure out and cost cost it all but my own feeling at the moment is that it would just be cost prohibitive and I am then stuck with the old bubble wrap again so I don't know what the answer to it is. It certainly is a paradox. It's a, a contradiction trying to say I will keep this greenhouse to the minimum of 12 degrees because it's just not as straightforward as first appears. Obviously, I've gone through a full winter now in the greenhouse. I know what it's like. I know how much it cost me. But winters change quite a lot and we do get some really, really mild and we do get some really, really cold winters. So what would happen if we had a real snowy, icy, frosty winter? Well, I guess it's going to cost me an awful lot. I don't know how much more. I mean, I've been in this greenhouse now talking on this video for 11 minutes and one of the heaters has been on pretty much permanently. So there's obviously still a lot going through the roof. So I don't know what you think, you know, if you've got some other solutions, let me know if you are equally perplexed as to why some greenhouse companies haven't come up with a, a better solution to this, a more permanent solution, because I really don't think that if it was all cut to measure, um, I don't think the poly should cost a lot. But when you start looking into it, unless you're going for like the really, really thin, I think the thinnest one I could see was a four millimeter. I mean, four, there's not a lot there, is there, in four millimeter polycarbonate? But would it make a difference? I don't know. I really don't know. And I'm, I'm standing here, and what I can smell is the sherry baby, and I can smell the Borogira down there, which I'm just about to get another bloom open up there. And tomorrow, hopefully, I have another orchid coming, which I ordered. And I'll give the game away as to what it is. And I've also ordered some carnivorous plants, which should be really interesting because I really, really love this sundew over here. So I ordered a, I will tell you this one. It was a Drosera madagascariensis. That was just one of them. I ordered a couple of sundews. I don't expect them to be looking fabulous as they haven't gone through the post and all the dew will be kind of squished off them and wiped off them. Um, but hopefully they will soon recover. So yeah, that's it for today. The paradox of the minimum greenhouse temperature. Nothing is quite as straightforward as it first seems, is it? Um, as usual, please put your thoughts and opinions and comments in the comments section. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.